Hey there, so you've tried out what it's like to actually act on your joy. Make sure that this is what you've actually tried out. It's important um, for the continuation of this course that you've actually put this to practice. So don't cheat yourself out of this. Actually prioritize your joy for the past two days. <clears throat> and then now we're going to add an balancing point to this because you may have noticed that at certain circumstances, you may have been really excited for something or at least thought or defined something as really exciting. But then the idea comes up, yeah, but what about my partner? Or what about my boss? Or what about my job? Or what about my friends? Or what about my child? Or what about the agreement that I've made to someone else? So then you reach this point of not being sure what to do. This paradox of wanting to honor your own integrity to your alignment, to your resonance, to your excitement. Wanting to trust in your excitement because isn't that what the higher self is communicating to us? Yes, but then what about integrity? What about respecting other people? What about honoring the agreements we have made? And this definitely is an important aspect of the journey. This definitely is very valuable to appreciate and to not just glance over and like, okay, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want to do because it feels good. That's not the idea, although it is, but we need to clarify the idea of what it is that feels good. <clears throat> And if it feels good because of our resonance, because of true energetic resonance, or whether it feels good because we have defined something else as negative, therefore that seems like a relief. A very important difference, right? So some things may seem like they're really appealing to us, but it might just be because they symbolize a certain type of freedom to us that we want. It may not actually be the symbol. We may not actually want to chase after the thing that represents this freedom to us. We may simply want to embody what that idea, that symbol of chasing after that particular thing means to us. How does it mean freedom? How does it mean more of ourselves that we're presently suppressing? And how can we integrate that into our lives? So start recognizing the difference between when you're truly, truly, truly excited about something, truly on fire, it feels truly aligning, and or when you are simply defining something as being offering more relief than the thing that you don't want to deal with. The definitions you've wrapped around your personal life, for example, therefore perhaps drugs seems like, well, that is exciting because it feels good. That's not exactly what I mean when I say follow your excitement. You have to be really honest with yourself as well and clearly be able to distinguish more and more clearly, which you will be able to with practice. So don't feel like you can make a mistake. Simply practice, bump into these challenges, and you will refine your wisdom, your clarity, your ability to distinguish between these two ways of feeling good. So one is always an escape from something else. And the true resonance is simply it excites you because that thing excites you and you're actually meant to go in that direction. And it feels complete and it feels whole and it might feel even a little bit scary because it's cutting edge for you. It challenges your belief system. But something that feels good because you're avoiding something else, you're avoiding negative beliefs you have placed upon something that is present in your life. Therefore, you wish to avoid that thing because as soon as you encounter that thing in your life, what you really encounter is how far you've placed your own vibrational position about that thing, your point of view about that thing, out of alignment with the truth of abundance, freedom, and empowerment. You may have, for example, created a lot of sense of obligation and fear and, and stress around this certain object or event or thing or, or partner perhaps even or other person or event. Therefore, you don't want to think about that. You would rather do drugs. This is just an example can be anything, eat a cookie or go, um, go out and start a company. That can even be a distraction. So you have to be really aware of this process and ask yourself, am I avoiding something? If so, then first look at that thing and see how you've gained negative lack beliefs about that event. And what you feel is not the event. The event is not painful and stressful. Your out of alignmentness with yourself is what feels stressful. You only ever feel the degree to which you position yourself in or out of alignment with your true self. You've never experienced an emotion. You've never experienced a circumstance. You only experience the degree to which you remove yourself from yourself or place yourself back in alignment with your true self.
right? So that's just an, sort of a side note, but it's a crucial, important side note that you have to be honest with yourself, especially when it comes to these things that are about to break or change your agreements with beings or things or contracts that are important to you in your life. So then, <clears throat> the three fundamental rules to help you understand integrity. Like I said, you start following your joy and then you come to this point, this crucial point where it seems like you have to make a choice between an existing agreement that you have with your life, with your partner, with your kid, with your parents, with your business associate, with your boss, whatever it may be, and something that truly excites you that seems to somehow negate or avoid or counter or oppose your existing agreements. Now, when you're really clear that the new direction is truly what you want, and that you have no place left in your existing agreement. How do you go about that? Like, how do you balance that out? How do you include integrity? So what I wrote down here is that the first rule of integrity, I got three fundamental rules. The first rule of integrity is everything in existence can and does coexist. See, this is a universal principle. So, Know in your heart that all possible chosen realities can be coexistent and they will coexist. So there is no, there's no need to see creation as having to fit into one singular reality. Yes, ultimately it is all one singular reality. It's all one single being expressing itself in infinite ways. But it generates infinite parallel realities precisely because it wants to express itself in infinite ways and it cannot express itself in infinite ways if it only creates one particular paradigm or creation or reality with one certain set of laws. It has to create infinite slices within its own one singular point of beingness that then can completely coexist and express completely and explore completely different themes and desires and preferences. So rule number one of integrity, the first rule of integrity is everything can and does coexist. Everything in existence can and does coexist. The second rule of integrity is respect another's free will. This will all become intuitive, by the way, but for now it's just sort of handy to start with some basic ideas or quote-unquote rules that you can fall back on if you're in doubt and gain some clarity from and then sharpen your own intuition. At some point you don't need to think about this anymore. So the second rule of integrity, respect another's free will. This is paramount. This is crucial. This is crucial for me on a daily basis. In fact, the more evolved in a sense you become, spiritually speaking or consciousness speaking, the finer that balance of love and wisdom becomes, of your spiritual journey becomes, the finer your vision becomes, your clarity becomes. It becomes more and more important to honor people's free will. It's just one of these fundamental principle sort of first law kind of ideas that applies throughout all of creation and on all levels of consciousness and therefore it's crucial that if you wish to align yourself even further if you wish to expand even further if you wish to fine-tune your balance being even further then at some point respecting other people's free will or other beings free will becomes of paramount importance so the second rule is respect other people's free will so that also means that you know in your heart that you are free to choose your reality. Whereas other portions of creation or other beings are completely free to choose their reality. So again, that's the coexistence idea. You don't have to feel like you have to stay stuck in a particular reality that belongs to them, nor do you, should you have the idea or, or um, harbor the idea or feeling that other people should stay in your reality because that's what your reality dictates, right? So it's very important that you feel free to make your choices and see that other people are free to make their choices. So you can inspire by example, but not impose or infringe upon their free will. You can offer what you know, you can offer what works for you, you can offer what excites you, but then it is up to them to either absorb that, take that, merge with that, or move away from that. And that needs to be respected, it's very crucial. Third rule of integrity is there is no lack anywhere in existence. If you would really fully get this single principle, then very naturally you would act with an integrity. 
because we only act in ways that are out of integrity because we believe there is something lacking because we believe we lack something and therefore we need to get the thing we desire at the expense of what everyone else desires so another way to put this rule of integrity that there is no lack anywhere in existence is to say that you don't have to deprive anyone else of what they desire in order for you to be able to choose and create what you desire now this is a very liberating principle a conviction so make it your own so i'll repeat you don't have to deprive anyone else or anything else of what they desire in order for you to choose and create what you desire again coexistence of realities therefore there's never any lack therefore you can be free to choose what you desire they can be free to choose what they desire and it doesn't ever have to conflict or be at war with each other you don't have to steal and deprive because there's infinite parallel realities available. Whatever you desire is somewhere for you in your own consciousness. It can be generated if you just tap into that frequency and start exuding it and start acting on your breadcrumb trail of joy and excitement. You will generate the reality you desire. You don't have to rush it and, and steal it from someone else or like deprive them of something they desire so that you can have what you desire. Right. So that's another fundamental principle of integrity in my experience, in my opinion. So in addition to those three rules that are sort of universal principles when it comes to integrity, as I've experienced them, um, here's four steps to help you master integrity in your everyday life. So what does the following your joy while maintaining your integrity look like? That's one of the questions that allows this to become practical. What does that look like in everyday life when these two are balanced? And how do I do that? How do I actually approach that? To know of those sort of universal rules is fun. But how do I apply this? So simply ask yourself the question whenever you are excited about something that you doubt is in or out of alignment, you ask yourself the first question. So this is step one. When following what excites you, check in with yourself if you are about to break any existing agreements. So something excites you and it seems to, at least on the surface of it, it seems to contradict or move away from certain agreements that you've made with people or businesses or contracts. So then ask yourself the question, by choosing my excitement, am I breaking any existing agreements, promises, or contracts? If not, go for it, enjoy yourself, have fun, and you'll feel 100% congruent about your choice. It'll just feel exciting, you won't be looking back at anyone or anything, you won't be having any regrets. Excellent. Now, if not, if, I mean, if it does break any existing agreements and promises, then you continue with step two. So step two is communicate clearly, honestly, fearlessly, and in as kind a way as possible. So find out to whom or which party that you need to communicate your change of heart before being able to comfortably take action on your new direction of excitement. If at all possible, then proceed to communicate with them as clearly as you can. So your excitement does seem to oppose something. It does seem to break some existing agreements if you were to execute that excitement. Now, you don't want to go there without communicating because then you'll be pulling yourself back at some point because integrity will force yourself back. You will be looking back. You'll be regretting your choices. You will not be feeling good about yourself. And you want your choices to be 100% in alignment. So before you make those choices that you're doubtful about, whether or not they break agreements, First, try to communicate as clearly as you can. Try to clear the slate. Try to start clean, start fresh. Have your fundamental foundation be clear. So then you communicate as clearly, as honestly, as fearlessly, and as kindly as you can to the parties involved in that agreement. You try to change the agreement by communicating that you've had a change of heart and that your resonance is really important for you. You wish to follow your resonance. You wish to follow what excites you. You wish for them to follow what excites them. And right now you just feel really strongly that you wish to change direction, right? Now, if you are not in any way possible to communicate before taking the new action, search your heart for the most balanced decision, keeping in mind the three fundamental rules of integrity and then take it from there. So this is where rubber meets the road. This is where sometimes, you know, you can't really, um, you can't really predict what a situation is going to be like and you have to go with your intuition You have to just go with the clear clearest that you can come up with in that moment and just try your very best 
I've had many, many experiences of this, many, many paradoxes. And honestly, I can say that this has expanded me and my wisdom and my integrity and my maturity so much. So don't fear those sort of gray area um, experiences because they teach you to rely on your own intuition rather than the rules that I gave you, for example. So those will really test you and those will really challenge you to stay true to your intuition and just try your best to maintain both integrity to your resonance while simultaneously maintaining integrity to other beings and agreements you've made. Learn from what follows, forgive yourself and or others when necessary, and fine tune your balance in mastering the art of integrity, right? So this is the step two, this all still belongs to step two, communicate honestly, fearlessly, clearly in as kind of way as possible. If you can't communicate, then trust your instincts, trust your intuition, do your very best, learn from the experience, forgive what needs to be forgiven and fine tune this process. Step three, know that it is ultimately okay to go your separate ways. It's a practical step because many times people forget this. They feel stuck in a relationship. They feel stuck in a contract. They feel stuck in a business, but it's not as bad as it seems. Usually when you break free from things, it's because the purpose of that thing no longer resonates for you. Once the purpose of a relationship has been transcended, has been extracted, why would you hold on to that empty container? So you gotta be really honest with yourself and trust that it is actually okay to move away from certain beings from certain companies, from certain contracts, that sometimes the time has come to move on, to make a change. So step three is know that it is ultimately okay to go separate ways. It's not a bad thing. So if your change of heart is patiently, clearly, honestly, and kindly communicated to all parties that agreements were made with, uh, that will be affected by your new direction. And now if the other party refuses to work with your newfound resonance, Search your heart. So if they, like you've communicated clearly, right? So first there's this new vision for your reality. Then you bump into this gray zone, like, oh, I did make this agreement with this person, but now I'm really excited about that thing or that person or that event. What do I do? Step two is you communicate. You communicate as clear as you can. Once you've done that patiently, not rush it and then, oh, well, you don't appreciate my resonance, but patiently you've given it some genuine attention. You've given it some genuine care you honor the other person's relationship with you or the other contracts or businesses relationship to you. Now, if the other party then still does not come to their senses and does not honor the principle of resonance, both in themselves and in you, if they don't wish to give you that freedom, then um, I say here, search your heart, which is again, the same as I said in step two, which is rely on yourself like really, really search for the highest possible intuition you can get in that moment, the highest clarity you can have access to. If you find that there is a way to maintain your reasonable agreements, why following your heart simultaneously go for that unless it really does not excite you to remain with that agreement at all? Then, you know, it's obvious that you are meant to move on regardless of other people's feelings ultimately or um, the agreements that you've made. So if not, if this is not possible, this combination of maintaining the reasonable agreements that you've made while also honoring your own resonance, if this seems not possible, then follow your heart and know that separation is only an illusion and not a real thing. This is sort of a last step kind of thing. It usually is not necessary when communication has been really clear. It's my experience that hardly ever is it necessary if commu communication has been really honest, really open, really vulnerable, really clear. So really emphasize step two, the communication part first. But if all else fails and the other person or being or, or contract or whatever is not to be reasoned with at all, again, search your own heart. This is the gray zone. See what you wanna do. Do you wanna stay in that agreement or do you really, really wanna move on and trust that that will shift your reality? Ultimately, I would say choose for the latter because you need to follow your excitement. It's important. You can postpone it for a little bit for the sake of integrity, for the sake of aligning your whole being so that in a congruent, 100% committed way, you can go about your passion and not have to look back and feel regret. But there is no sense in staying in something that truly just no longer fits you. So trust that it is okay to go separate ways. 
The essence of your relationship to another can never be separate or lacking. Know this. The essence of your relationship, the energetics of it, the spirit connection of your beings can never be separate. Only on a physical singular slice out of all that is potential possibility can it seem like things are lacking and missing, but it's not actually the case. Respect the importance of one another's journey and the choices that have to be made to honor one's resonance. This goes both ways. You want what's best for them. You want their journey. You honor their journey, their free will, what's important for them. And similarly, you honor your own. And you, in a sense, demand that they honor that too. That should be implied in any type of relationship or contract, but oftentimes it's not. So you have to communicate this as clearly as you can, that you wish to honor your own resonance and you wish to honor theirs. Don't live your entire life suppressing your resonance for the sake of an agreement you once made. There is always a way to follow your heart while maintaining the highest degree of integrity. If it seems like it's either A or B, ask for option C, the third unseen option, right? So is, if it looks like, okay, I either follow my excitement and break everyone, everyone else's heart, everyone that's important in my life so far, or I break all my agreements and all my contracts, or I stay in my contracts and I stay with the people that mean a lot to me or that have meant a lot to me, that I have committed a lot of time to and that have committed a lot of time to me, but I will be suppressing my joy and I will be suppressing my journey, my free will, my resonance, my higher self's guidance. Then if anything, choose the joy part. If you have to make a choice, choose the joy part. But try this first. Ask for the higher, third, more creative, out of the box thinking, unseen option. There's always a third option that allows you to maintain that integrity through communication, usually, while then, in a sense, dealing with things and solving these things and getting really clear with those existing agreements, while you then can fully congruently go about and explore your new direction. Step four, this is just sort of an additional tip, which is avoid making more static agreements in the future. Time is speeding up collectively and individually. You are empowering yourself. This means that on an everyday basis, more and more and more changes will occur. You cannot say who you are the next day. It becomes harder and harder to determine who you're going to be. So just, I wouldn't say be careful, but be a little bit careful when you're entering new agreements. Realize that you can change your heart at, the, at any instant. It's not certain that you'll remain the same person you are today. So just always know that when you're making new agreements from now on onwards, and somehow in the agreements that you do resonate with making, have this fine print, or not fine print, but this big title say, this is all the case, this agreement is the case, as long as it honors both of our journeys or both of our resonances. So always include something in the communication with that person or with that business or with that contract that allows you the freedom to not have to break that agreement if you wish to change yourself, if you wish to change your path. So always include that in the conversation. If you are making new static, seemingly long-term agreements, include that in the conversation that it should be about each other's resonance, that that should be paramount. Each other's free will and each other's journey should be appreciated and completely honored. And at some point that doesn't match up anymore, that should be appreciated, that should be supported. So that has to be in the contract. If that's not in the contract, um, then I would simply say, and if no negotiations seem to be possible, so then unless you're absolutely certain and absolutely completely excited about that long-term static contract, which does not seem to allow for any fine print in terms of following your residence at any given moment, then I would say don't. Okay, often we enter into agreements that only partially resonate for us because we think that, well, it's better than nothing, or at least I'll get some payment, or at least I get some kind of relationship. But it has to resonate. Sure, don't be too quick to say no. Explore what's actually there for you. Explore what that thing, that agreement, that relationship could become for you. Give it whatever you have to give in that moment to explore that. However, if the agreement or the communication or the conversation at some point does not seem to allow for the freedom that you desire for yourself, then I would say walk away from that agreement if no negotiations are possible. 
because then at that point it's no longer exciting. You're about to enter into a jacket that's already too tight to begin with, let alone two weeks from now, let alone two years from now when you're expanded even more. If it already feels a little bit tight to enter that agreement or to sign that contract, don't. You can attract something way better the next day or even the next hour or the next minute. You can walk away from that contract with a smile on your face, confident in the abundance, the endlessness of existence, that infinite parallel realities exist and that as soon as you shift your frequency, you will literally attract a different opportunity. If you know that and you walk away from that agreement, which you thought was actually kind of awesome, except for this one thing that felt like a, er, like a, a contraction, if you walk away from that agreement, with a smile on your face, absolutely confident in the abundance that you can generate whatever you truly desire, then the very next day or the very next minute, you will get a phone call with a new opportunity. This is just a matter of speaking, but actually, literally, physically, this is what always happens. When you have faith in your journey and know that you can create something that is a 100% reflection of who you are, then you don't have to settle for something that is only partially resonant. And that sort of teases your lack of beliefs like, well, if I at least accept this agreement, which resonates for 85%, then at least I'll get payment, I'll be able to buy my food, and I'll have some love. If it only partially resonates, you don't need to accept that agreement. You really don't. You really don't. You can create something even better. Knowing that, be confident in the abundance of existence. You'll be in alignment, and that alignment will create the actual reality. Don't be teased by your lack beliefs. There is no lack. So for this lesson's homework, I would like you to continue the previous lesson's homework, which again is to prioritize your joy over your schedule, over anything that you would think normally you have to do or you should do. Really start experimenting with rooting yourself in the most exciting options available to you and start acting on these and start making the most out of these and start integrating them in your life. And now do that with the integration of your newfound knowledge and awareness, hopefully, of what it means to maintain integrity. I know this lesson was a little bit jumbled, it was a little perhaps complicated, but you can always refer back to this lesson and just read it through or listen to it again a couple times and then test it out in the field, in the field of your life, and you will bump into these experiences and then you'll be again able to refer back to the lesson and combined with your own testing experiences and this lesson, you will be able to come to a really clear intuitive self-reliant way of maintaining your integrity while you're absolutely acting on your excitement every single day with no concessions except for maintaining your integrity, which is the perfect balance. Again, you want to be congruent in your new choice. You don't want to have to look back. You don't want to feel like a portion of you is left behind because you didn't solve something properly or you didn't give it your best shot. So thank you. Enjoy the new balance and I'll see you for the next lesson, which will add yet another principle to this equation of prioritizing your joy and excitement. Keep following that breadcrumb trail one moment at a time. No expectation of where the next one may be. Just one moment at a time. Blind with passion, blind with love, blind with excitement.